How you doing today there, crybaby? You big baby sitting there with your little trolls. So today, guys, here we are. This is a shillelagh. And since St. Paddy's Day is coming up, and uh, my second family, well, first family, totally family, the only thing that we're not is blood. They're from West Belfast. <clears throat> and this has been at my house since I believe I was a little kid's. And I believe it was my uh, grandfather's, I, I guess they could say granddad. Lisa, this, um, I got to get this to my, uh, my stepbrother, Colin. Because I'm sure he'd love to have this. Because he follows all the history. This is like an old um, uh, royal, I can't even pronounce that, Ulster. So this is like an old army. These are old, old weapons, guys. This is what they used to use back in the day to club people over the head. So when I was young, maybe like five or six, we moved. My mom had her boyfriend, Greg. He's like a stepdad to me, too. I have like two stepdads. Um, we moved to a new new area in our town where I still live, Ladner, British Columbia, Canada. And we moved to a new area in a little house. And there was these two boys. They were Irish. I could barely uh, like um, understand what they said. They were they were just so Irish. And like uh, I don't know if you guys see the the BAP videos. Lots of you guys have a hard time understanding what he says. But me and those little Irish boys, Colin and Gary. We became best friends. We'd play in the park and do play all day long and stuff like that as kids. And then eventually his mom and dad, his mom and their dad, they split up. They got divorced. I believe that my stepdad's name's Bob, last name Taggart. I believe he came over here to get away from the violence that was happening in the in Belfast. I'm, don't hold me to that if I'm if I'm incorrect, but I think he came over here to get away from the, the violence and give his kids a better life over here in Canada because there was lots of violence happening in um, Ireland at that time, like the wars with the different sides. I don't know. I'm lost when it comes to all that stuff. I can't. It's hard for me to follow it. They try telling me, but I still it, does, it confuses me. And I got to watch what I'm going to say here because my I'm going to be sending this video to my family in Belfast so they can see it too. So they're making this, this, this shillelagh in honor of all them too, right? So like there's West Belfast, East Belfast, North Belfast. I'm not too sure how it all works, but I believe it's uh, everybody kind of gets along now and there's no more wars. I, I don't know once again. So, but Colin's and Gary's mom and dad split up. And then sooner or later, the dad, Bob Taggart, he knew my mom because because of us, right? Like Bob, even when Bob and my mom weren't together and he was still married with Mrs. Taggart, he would pick me up every Friday night and take me to this uh, local hockey game. And he, just like his sons, he would give us all $2 each and he would give me $2 too. Like even before he was with my mom, he treated me like one of, one of his sons. So anyways... This, uh, he's my stepdad now. He's been my stepdad my whole life. You know, and this video is for him and all his family. And without Bob in my life, I would have, I would have been in jail or I would have been dead a long time ago. I really would have. So this, this shillelagh, Bob already has, Bob and his girlfriend Maggie already has lots of my carvings. But this first shillelagh that I make, I'm going to give it to my brother Colin. Because he follows the Irish all that stuff, you know, so this is going to be a surprise video for him. I'm going to send him the video when it's done. And then I know once I give this one to Colin, I'm going to have to make one for my brother Gary too. So, but anyways, this one's for you, Colin. I'm going to carve this out. Maybe I'll carve a wood spirit in here for you. And uh, I got to get all, rid of all this bark. I, this one is Blackthorn, guys. This is the real Blackthorn wood. This is the real, real McCoy. I want to get some... Uh, I want to get some blackthorn to carve, but they're real mystical trees, and I got a few friends in Ireland lo looking for a piece for me to carve. You know, the blackthorn trees, they say, don't go near it or don't touch it, because that's where the little fairies um, dance under the blackthorn trees at nighttime or something, 
And if you touch the black four and three or heard it, then you're going to get cursed or your family member is going to get cursed. I don't know how it works. But anyways, so let me get on. I got to get all this bark off this piece. So the sh shillelaghs now, they use them for canes. They're still weapons, but they, because the shillelaghs got banned, you know, so they got outlawed. So now they just use them for um, canes. But the cane still could be a weapon because you got the big stump. This is where you hold your hand. You got the big stump and you can take this and bap. So this would be a huge cane. So if I got a weapon anyways, I don't want a cane. I want a goddamn log. That's what this, this is a log weapon. Okay, guys. So I've been re removing lots of this bark with my um, paint mixer. It also does act as a, screw, a screwdriver, which will peel off the bark too. When you guys are doing a project like this, I think it's best to clean your whole piece first. Clean everything first, then start your carving or whatever you're going to do. Okay, so I've just gone along this and taken this off. I did offer this for sale for $50 billion on some of my other videos, but I think this thing has an... This is a sentimental piece to me, guys. This piece is... You know, this, this uh, paint mixer has done me a lot of good. So I don't think I can, at this point, I can sell it anymore, guys. So I'll have to pass if anybody wants to buy this. So anyways, I got this tool too, guys. The Merlin too. I love it. This is just staying at my hand carving. So I got some light pieces of bark on here. So I'm going to, this is a pro tool, guys. Okay. See, it's got a disc on there like the cut saws. See how aggressive it is? So I'm going to go along and lightly take off this bark and kind of slowly carve down these stumps really lightly guys this isn't a heavy hand tool this is a pro tool heavy hands shouldn't even have this tool in his hands but i have to remember when i'm using this just to take it really easy okay so i'm going to go around and clean this whole thing up just really lightly okay I'll be back. And once again, if you don't have wood chips in your coffee, what the hell of a kind of a carver are you, huh? <sighs> okay, so with that Merlin too, it took me Merlin too, it took me about um, 15 minutes to clean up this thing. So, you know, as I started cleaning it up, I realized this piece of wood is spalted. Spalted is fungus, guys, so it means it's, st it's starting to rot, but it's not rotten. It's just starting to. Okay, and another thing, too, by cleaning it up, see these cracks here? I didn't see those cracks in there at all before. I thought it was a solid piece. Okay, so I got this cleaned up. I want my brother to have a couple of my wood spirits, and that's what I love carving. So that's what I'm going to carve, and I really don't give a shit. So we're going to carve a wood spirit up there. You can see I already got my center line drawn in. Just Carve Rob made the Jordy Lee and uh, check out his channel, guys. Just Carve Rob. He does some pretty cool projects. He carves little guys like this, like whittling. And I'll leave a link to his uh, description below. Just Carve Rob, another wood carver. And I support his channel 100%. And here's another center line. So I'm going to have a wood spirit up there and a wood spirit down there. What I'm going to do to carve these wood spirits is use my Dremel 4000 with my Cutsole Extreme Flame Burr, guys. And you guys, when you use your burrs, put them close to the handpiece. I'll show you in a second what I mean. Don't put them far out because that's, I see a lot of you guys are breaking your burrs and that's why you break your burrs. You, you bend the shaft because you run this too fast and this thing will warp because it's too far out. I'll show you in a second. So anyways, I'm gonna do the bulking out with this. Then I'm gonna switch over. I just got this in the mail uh, two days ago. And I'm going to do the detail with this RAM micro carver. This was like a 400 and something dollar tool for me, guys. So this is only for detail. Okay, so I'm going to get set up here and do some carving. Okay, guys, I know I keep on going over and over the same thing. But some of you guys that are just beginning to use this uh, flex shaft or just your Dremel, you guys will put the burrs this and leave them this far out and tighten it up. When the burr is this far out, when it's spinning, the burr has, it can, it can wobble like this. Okay. It's hard on your, your burr shaft and it's hard on the bearings inside here. There's a metal shaft. There's a bearing here and a bearing here. And when that thing's wobbling, because if it's not a, a thousand percent true straight, it will bend this or it will wreck inside here. 
So this is what I do guys, push it in and just carve Rob does it too. Push it in, all the way in, okay? All the way in and pull it out just a little bit. Okay, hit your locking pin, tighten it up. So that way too guys, you, you pull it out just a little bit. You see there, I pulled it out in there. I just pulled out just a little bit. That way if your burr gets jammed up inside here and you can't pull it out, all you have to do is pretend my hand's the table, okay? And it's going like this. All you have to do is tap this down, tap this down, your pan piece down on the table like this, and it will push back. It will push back just a little bit, then you can pull it out. You guys, keep your burrs tight inside your hand pieces, okay? Don't leave them out there, okay? Do it. Promise you. Only my suggestion. Everything in this video is my suggestion. Okay, shut up, Jordy. And you guys, when you want to learn how to draw a carve a wood spirit, just for the basic beginners, the way I kind of do, just look at my playlist. You'll see uh, step by step, like a four or five video series, how to carve a wood spirit. So this isn't the very piece, thick piece of wood. Once again, this is Douglas first. So I'm going to make the nose thinner. I always start off with the thickness of the nose because you can gauge that for your piece of wood, right? So I think it's important to, um, I always get my center lines. Your center line should be in the center of the piece of wood, if it makes sense. I'm half mental, guys, so whatever. Okay, so there's my nose. I think it's a good size. This, you can tell it's wider over here than it is over here. Like this part's wider, right? So maybe I'm just going to, sorry, guys, I'm just going to move the nose over a little bit more. Okay, there's your eyebrows. Let's just uh, give this guy. Actually, you know what? Let's make this beard guy, this guy's beard wrap around. So he's going around, flowing around, right? It's for my brother, so I want this to be a nice piece. Okay, so I got that line in. I got this line in, spinning it around. And I make it so the end of the, the beard, end of the mustache comes out so you can see it end where the face is. And also I stood this up first, guys. Like I stood it up to see where it would sit nice and flat. Like I stood it up on the floor, nice and flat. So this is the side that sits flat facing out. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to get carving. I'm going to put a wood spirit in here, a wood spirit down here. And then I'll be back talking about detail. Okay, so I got the wood spirits blocked out now. You can see there I'm going to be making a four leaf clover. And um, so I was going to use this micro motor with this aluminum cutter to carve all the beard hairs in, like individually, like I do on my other videos, like this on edge. You can get these sets on my uh, Amazon thing down below, guys. They come in sets of 10 for like 20 bucks, the aluminum cutters. I was going to use it because this holds one eighth, but I, I think it's still a little bit too aggressive for this tool, this cutter. So I'm going to use my Dremel and I'm going to go along and cut all those friggin' beard. This whole thing's a friggin' carving now. I didn't, I was just going to do a little wood spirit on each part, but now the whole thing's turned out to be a carving. So anyways, I'm going to run around and get that done now and then I'll be back and we'll talk about detail on the eyes or 
whatever. If these guys are going to have ice, I kind of like them the way they are without the ice. They still, they still look cool without the ice, guys, in my opinion. Okay. Okay, that was a lot of work cutting in all those beard hairs and all the hair hairs and cut all the way around, all the way up top. Okay. You can see this mustache comes off higher. There's a couple parts I see those two spots there. That's where it dug in too, too deep. See right in the center there? I'll touch that up after. And, uh, well... Yeah, I gotta do some better undercuts underneath that uh, clover leaf. See that, guys? This bone really magnifies it. <laughs> so, um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, I got this little diamond burr on here. This is my ram hand piece. I'm gonna cut some, carve some eyes in. So, uh, I'm gonna have to set my camera up on the uh, mount. Okay, so I've been really working on my eyes uh, quite a bit here. So I just kind of draw a round bowl in here, kind of. I'm just going to carve these ones really quick. I'm not going to spend it because they're so small, right? So you can see those kind of, see them? They're equal. There's one round one drawn in here and another one drawn in here. Then your eyelids will come down here. I'm not going to explain too much on this video, guys. I'll, if you guys, if you want to make me, if you want to see me make more uh, videos carving wood spirits, how to carve wood spirits, and then do the eyes and the detail stuff, just let me know in the comments below, please. I read all the comments. And I try to reply to all of them, or at least say I like them, you know. But I do read them all. Okay, so there's kind of two eyes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this little diamond bird. I'm going to cut on the inside of these lines and try and make it look like there's a round ball inside of here. Okay, each one of them is going to have a round ball inside. I don't know, whatever. When you use a tool like this, guys, let the tool do the work. Let the bird do the work. Don't, don't power, like, see how slow I'm going? Okay, so this one's a little bit bigger, but no big, this side's a little bit bigger, but no big deal. You know, on my video I did the other day describing this tool and how expensive it was compared to the Dremel flex shaft. You know, I can get a Dremel 400 with the flex shaft for about 120 bucks all in. And this almost cost me like, I think it's like 360 American. And somebody left a comment saying, oh, what a, it's kind of, basically his comment was saying this was a waste of money spending so much money on this because it seems like the Dremel flex shaft has more power and more torque. Well, I strongly dis disagree with you, my friend. I strongly do disagree with you. This has more power and more speed, and it's a lot more controllable than the Dremel flex shaft. Trust me. I'm not trying to sell this piece. Ram doesn't even know who I am, okay? Or these micro carvers, they don't know about carving fusion. But I'm saying right now, with this carver in your hand, you have way more control because more speed and power is on these bits. It's like you can draw a nice line with it. It's hard to explain, but I strongly disagree with that comment. And another big thing, big thing to these things is watch this, how fast, this is the bird that I'm going to be using, but watch how fast I can take it out and put a new one in. Take it out, put a new one in, lock it up, you're done.
Okay guys, so I got it all cleaned up. I got some uh, wood dye, kind of make one of the faces green. I got the, the clover leaf, four leaf clover dyed and I put some black in the eyes just to give it extra highlight when I put this uh, poly shade on. You know, one of my subscribers just asked an uh, email, what's the difference between, why do I use poly shades just compared to like um, wood stain? Well, when I was learning how to carve and use different stains, you know, if you use the oil-based stain, you can't put this protective over it because it's water-based and this and that. It just gets very, very, very confusing, okay? I found this stuff, and this is what works best for me, okay? That's the bottom line. You're staining the piece, and you're also protecting it at the same time. No complications for me. This stuff makes it simple for me because there's so many different brands, so many different makes, some water-based, some oil-based, you know, some can't go over top of other. This just simplifies it for me. So I, I get a stain when I'm doing this and I get a protective coat when I'm doing this too. And it makes it kind of shiny. So let's get this, uh, pull, let me get set up here to get this poly shade on. Brand new can, I've never used this color. I haven't used this color in a long time anyways, but I got to mix it up with my um, famous paint mixer. Okay guys, so I switched up the color. Okay, this is a uh, Mission Oak. I, I tried a sample piece on the bottom and I just didn't like the way that color looked. It looked too brown. So I want this piece to uh, be dark and have a rich kind of tone to it. So it just goes to show you to mix up, um, to test your colors on some piece on the carving or a different piece of wood, same color, that uh, you just, so you can try it out, okay? So look guys, this is even a, pa a can opener, this uh, mixing mixing thing I got here. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so let's just get some of this on here. So, um, you know, this is an Irish piece. Shillelagh. I'm not Irish. Okay, so I just want it to be known why my channel is called Carving Fusion. The word fusion is in there because I'll carve whatever I want to friggin' will carve, want to carve. You know, if I want to carve a friggin' totem pole, a native totem pole, I'm going to carve a native totem pole. And who's going to tell me to stop? I can't do it. Sure, it's not 100% authentic. Like this shillelagh. Shillelagh or whatever it's called is not 100% authentic. But my family's Irish. I consider them blood. You know, when my mom passed away, my dad's, my dad's sister, Auntie Anne, she came over from Belfast to just to give my dad comfort, my stepdad Bob comfort. So how could I cannot how can I not consider them blood? They're crazy, all those Irish. They say I'm crazy, but they're the crazy ones. Absolutely. My brother Colm, you know, he, uh, who I'm making this piece for, growing up, I never admitted it to him, but, like, he was, all, he, everybody liked my brother Colm. He was a fr very friendly, sociable person. I remember him in the cafeteria at lunchtime, like at school, when I wasn't, before I got kicked out, when I wasn't in the normal school, he would get the french fries in the cafeteria and pull out the little pack, packs of ketchup and so you got a little french fry here and you put each string of ketchup with those little packs on each french fry i used to bug about that but it's just you know my brother colin's cool i like to say he's got adhd because he's always he always got it has to do something like colin fucking relax buddy just take it easy He's always like he's a he's a go-getter, Colin. That's for sure. When growing up too, he was he was one of the tougher kids. That's for sure. I never admitted it to him, and he knows that. I think one time he said to me, "How come you never like you think I'm a pussy or something?" Like, no, Colin. Believe me, you're one of the tougher guys around, and I definitely wouldn't want to tangle with you. That's for sure. But just a, just a very likable. See, then I wipe it off, guys. See, I like how dark it's is making it look. But my brother Colin is just a very likable person. But sometimes his ADHD just drives me nuts. I tell him that too. I'm like, buddy, are you take your medication today? <laughs> Colin's going to be watching this video, so 
he knows he knows what I'm talking about. He's probably laughing right now, but uh, he probably knows what I'm saying, like about him being tough. Yeah, when we were younger, my brother Gary and Colin, like my my stepfather's a, a huge uh, supporter of the the Legion here in Delta. He was the president for a while, but um, they used to, him and my mom when we were kids. They used to go out to Legion on a Friday night for the meat draw and party and have their fun. And Colin used to kind of be in charge of taking care of me and Gary because he's older, right? My younger brother, Gary. But me and Gary, like, I don't think Colin's ever hit me or beat me up. I don't think so. Or, or we fought or anything like that. He would kick my ass. I know that. But when they used to go to Legion, sometimes me and Gary, my younger brother, he was a lot shorter than me too, but he's Irish. He's crazy. I would piss him off or he would piss me off. I don't know, but sometimes, I think I've already even told one of this, this story in one of my um, YouTube's video, but he used to, uh, I used to have to go hide in the bathroom and Gary would chase after me with knives. Oh yeah. Even Colin, the tough, tough older brother, would have to call the Legion and get, get uh, Bob or my mom to come home because he thought me, or, me and Gary was going to kill each other. <laughs> sometimes I think it was sometimes I think mostly Gary because he was smaller he would have to ch he was the one chasing me with with knives well now Gary's the tallest out of all of us he's he's the biggest out of all of us yeah he's he's a tough boy too I wouldn't uh I wouldn't want to tangle with him now that's for sure but whatever we're family so it doesn't really matter but yeah so I don't know I love my brothers. I don't I don't see them enough. That's why I'm making this for Colin. And I know 100% I'll have to make another one for Gary. I seen them this Christmas, but they they live a couple hours away from Well, Colin lives a couple hours away from me. Gary only lives about I don't know half an hour, but they're just married with their kids and they're just, you know, busy being family guys. I don't think I ever have that in my I have my son. He's 21. He's out on his own. I don't think I'll ever be that type of person. Family guy. Like, my sister was giving me shit before. She's like, Jordy, you need to find a girl to settle down. I think I said to her, I said, like, this is when I was in the hospital. I think I said, Julie, you know what? You know wolves. Or lions. I said, you know lions. She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, they have their fields. And their lions are solo. The male lions, whatever they're. I'm like a male lion. I'm solo. I have my field. I have my playground. When I want to go out and have fun, I go out and have fun. I've had a few girls come around that I fell in love with, and they ended up breaking my heart. So I'm just, I just stay solo. I don't care. Nothing says, nothing in the, nothing says you need to be married in life. That's for sure. As long as you enjoy your life. And I, and from my injury, there's no girls out there that would be able to let me do my art whenever I wanted to. If we had, that's what happened. Me and my last girlfriend broke up because we had something planned. And when I, that's when I was painting, I'd always break our plans because I wanted to stay home and paint. So yeah, it's, it's retarded. This thing's sure dark. That's for sure. Don't even see the green on this face. Anyways, I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back. Okay, so like I do in all my other videos, I hit this one, it's still wet with this stuff, okay? With my flap sander. You guys can see in my playlist how to make these flap sanders. It's emery cloth. Just look at my playlist, you'll see this there. So then I do, as I go over the high points, it will give it some special, like high effects. High points and low points are big things, guys. Okay guys, so here it is all finished. The poly shade's still a little bit wet. But uh, guys, let me know in the comments more of what you want to see me do some more uh, instructional carvings of. I can carve basically anything I want. I know I still have to do my monster, but whatever. So my brother Colin, this is ready for you to pick up whenever you got time or I guess I should come down and uh, visit soon. And uh, I'll bring this too because I think this will probably be great importance of you because 
you're you're so much into the Irish culture, and I believe this was your grandfather's or something like that. Your dad will know where it came from. But anyways, I'll make sure you get these two. And I'm sure if Gary sees this video, I'll have to make him one too. Well, I don't have to, but I want to. So anyways, hope everybody's good. And uh, just enjoy what you're carving. If you're not enjoying what you're carving, we'll move on to something else. Okay, see you later. Mm -hmm.